Hello there friends, today I'm going to discuss how I made this giant rhino beetle display box. I'll also give a quick tutorial on insect pinning in general, and how to get started in that. This is a really interesting hobby, which I've been doing for about a year now. It takes a little bit of practice, but you get a little bit better every single time you do it, and I think this one turned out great. Obviously the first thing you need for insect pinning is an insect itself. A giant rhino beetle like this is not native to Canada, so I ordered this one on Etsy. These insects cannot be imported live, and they need to be thoroughly dried out before shipping. So the first thing I need to do here is to rehydrate it. This can be done by placing the insect into a cup of boiling water and leaving it there for about five minutes. The larger the insect, the longer this will take. So there's really no set amount of time. You just need it to be soft and pliable. I'm going to start by cracking open the hard outer wing. This is arguably the most sensitive part. You want to lift this with just as little force as possible and not break the connective tissue where it attaches to the actual beetle. If this does happen, there's no easy way to reattach it. I'm now going to stabilize the beetle by placing the first pin directly through the center and holding it down. You should be careful not to pin the actual abdomen itself because fluid can drain from this. This is one of the very first beetles I ever did and although I think it turned out great, you can see how that deflated. Now that our beetle is pinned down in the center, I'm also going to place pins around the sides. This will help give it even more stability. I'm now going to use some pins to prop open the hard outer wings. This will help keep the inner wings exposed and make them easier to work on. Now that we have the hard outer wings cracked open and the insect pinned down, we can begin to work on the inner wings. This is obviously a very delicate part and you'll need to be very careful. In my opinion, for a beginner, starting with a beetle this size is actually much easier. Doing a smaller one is a lot more intricate, finer to work on. But the flip side of that is that if you damage this, it's actually a lot more expensive than if you were working on a tiny one. As you can see, after stretching the wings out as far as they'll go without breaking, I've used strips of wax paper and some additional pins to hold them down. Using this wax paper helps you to hold things down without having to actually pin through them, which is perfect for wings. You want to put these pins through the wax paper as close to the edge of the wing as possible without actually puncturing it. So I'm just going back and forth between each wing now, trying to get them as straight and symmetrical as possible. There's really no correct way to do this. You just keep working on it until you're happy with the result. Another thing you want to consider about insect pinning is that there's no set amount of pins that you should use. You're going to use as many as it takes to get the result you want. Now I'm putting a few pins in place on each front leg to hold them in place. As this insect dries further, they'll have a tendency to curl in, and this will prevent that from happening. I'm now attempting to pull out the back legs in order to pin those down as well. This is an optional step, but I think it looks cooler when you do. You can see that me pulling on the legs has caused the insect to shift around a bit. Its wings are not as straight and symmetrical as they once were. This isn't a big deal. You don't need to be surprised or frustrated by this. You just need to make those little adjustments afterwards. And that's all there is to it. We now have a successfully pinned beetle. This isn't really a complicated thing to do. It just takes practice. The more you do it, the better you're going to get. It's time to allow this to dry out and set. From here, you need to make sure that it's all perfect and exactly how you want it to be. Because once it dries, there's no going back. You won't be able to move anything. Two weeks later, and it's time to remove all these pins. You want to do this very slowly and be very careful. Put some thought into which ones you're removing first and try not to break anything. The animal is much more fragile now that it's dried. Treat this specimen very gently. Dropping it at this point and breaking a wing off is pretty disheartening. Now to remove the last pin which was placed through the center. You're going to want to do this very very slowly. In my experience, this is almost always where I drop it or break it because you have to really yank it out. Now to construct the display case. This one I ordered from Amazon for about 25 Canadian dollars. I'm sure you can find something cheaper, but I thought it looked nice. It also comes with a little lighting display, but we're just going to throw that away.
This case is relatively easy to assemble, and it's all going to snap together when it's prepared. It does come with some protective film over all of the acrylic though, and I'll have to remove that and clean it all up. This sheet of moss, which I found at a local dollar store, is perfect for this project. It's already nice and flat and will work nicely. Moss is usually pretty easy to find. You can get it at craft stores or you can order it on the internet. They also carry it in a lot of pet stores. I'm now going to use some hot glue as an adhesive to hold down the moss onto the base of the display stand. I'm going to place sheets of it over the hot glue until the base is covered and it's exactly how I want it to be. Now to just clean up the edges a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit more glue and moss just to patch a few little holes that I can see here. I'm going to use a small piece of cork wood as the actual base to mount my rhino beetle onto. But in order to do this properly, I need to flatten it on the sides. A good amount of glue on the bottom to ensure it's not going to go anywhere, and then I'm going to stick it directly onto the moss. I'm going to hold it in place for a couple of minutes, just so that I know it's set properly. And that's it. Really not that complicated, pretty easy to do. Now to glue my beetle onto the cork wood. You really want to think about this too and make sure that it's symmetrical and even. You want it to be right in the center so that it actually fits within the case. Using hot glue inevitably leads to these little strands and you can just pick them off afterwards. I'm also going to cover any of the parts that have excessive glue with a little more moss to make it look more natural. We're almost all finished here. It's time to put this case together and it's going to be ready for display. Time to remove any fingerprints that may have been present on the acrylic. We're going to have this thing ready for display in just a couple minutes. So if you're someone who's thinking about trying this for yourself, I think you'll do great. It's really not that complicated. Like I mentioned, I started about a year ago, and I've gotten progressively better every time. I think this one turned out awesome. If you're having any trouble with this, or just have additional questions, you can feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to help as much as I can. My biggest problem right now is where I'm going to keep all of these things. I'm starting to get quite the collection going and I'm running out of space. So if you're at all interested in purchasing one, you can also contact me for that as well. <laughs> 